In this episode, we will take you on a pulse-pounding adventure through the world of rock climbing, where danger and excitement go hand in hand. These stories will make you rethink the risk and rewards of this extreme sport, as I am definitely not going to be pushing the limits anytime soon, as we explore tales of near-death experiences, unexpected encounters, and tragic accidents. Whether you're a seasoned climber or a curious observer, these stories will keep you on the edge of your seat. So, grab your bag of chalk and harness and join us for a thrilling ride up the vertical world. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. Don't forget to slap that like button, subscribe if you're new, and get ready for these creepy rock climbing horror stories. Sometimes when I'm trying to take my packages to the post office to send out to you guys, the lovely swamp dwelling folk who buy the shirts and hoodies we have on sale, I get suddenly attacked by a swarm of terrible, very angry, and very irritable grandmas. Now I know what you're thinking, Swamp Dweller, don't you love grandmas and don't grandmas love you? How could this ever go wrong? I know, I know exactly what you're saying. I tried to walk around, I even tried to offer to walk them across the street like the good boy scout I am, but the hustle and tussle that they had ended up throwing my boxes and packages all into the water and they were ruined. But that would never happen if I had ShipStation at the time. But ever since I partnered with ShipStation, all of those headaches have gone away and it has been an honest breeze breeze to be able to get my shipping done. There are no more hordes of grandmas beating me up and pushing me into the water with my packages. There are no more Bigfoots trying to steal things off the back of the truck. ShipStation is quick to set up, easy to learn, and even has a free trial. You can get up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates, and if that's not enough, use my promo code to try ShipStation free for two months, that's 60 days. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce businesses, including mine, with ShipStation. And 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. Just use promo code SWAMPED today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, promo code SWAMPED. And stay away from those crazy grannies. My Terrifying Time at O'Neill Butte by Jeremy of Rome I've always been an adrenaline junkie, so when my friends invited me on a rock climbing trip to O'Neill Butte, you know I could not resist. I heard stories about the area being haunted, but I brushed them off as folklore. But little did I know, those stories would become my reality. We arrived at the Butte early in the morning, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of unease as we started our ascent. O'Neill Butte is a towering sandstone monolith located in the heart of Sedona, Arizona. It's known for its challenging routes and stunning views, but there's more to this butte than meets the eye. As we climbed higher, the air grew colder and the wind picked up. It felt as if we were being watched. Every time I turned to look, there was never anything there. I tried to shake off the feeling and focus on the climb, but it only got worse. That's when we reached the halfway point and everything changed. My friend, who was leading the climb, suddenly froze in place. I asked him what was wrong, but he didn't want to respond. It was as if he was in some sort of trance. That's when I heard it. A low whispering that seemed to be coming from the rock itself. I looked around frantically, but I couldn't see anything. The whispering grew louder and more frantic, and I felt like I was losing my mind. That's when I saw movement out of the corner of my eye. It was a figure, but it was unlike anything I had ever seen before. It was tall and thin with impossibly long limbs and a face that was distorted beyond recognition. It seemed to be made of a shadow and mist. It was moving towards us at an alarming rate. I shouted at my friend, but he didn't respond. I knew we had to get down and fast. I started to descend as quickly as I could, but my hands were shaking, and my feet kept slipping. That's when I felt a hand on my ankle. I knew I was in trouble at this point. I looked down to see the figure climbing to me, its eyes glowing in otherworldly light. I screamed and kicked, trying to shake it off, but it, it was no use. It was as if it had its grip on me. That was stronger than any rock or metal. That's when I heard a voice in my head, clear as day. It said, 
You're not leaving here alive. I closed my eyes and prayed for a miracle, but I opened them and the figure was gone. My friend was still in his trance, but he eventually snapped out of it and we made our way back down to the ground. To this day, I don't know what the heck happened up there on O'Neill Butte. All I do know is that something evil lurks there, and it's not to be trifled with. I'll never forget that climb and the horror that still lingers in my mind. Rock Climbing Horror Story by Centennial Climber 95 I remember the day I decided to go on a rock climbing trip in Colorado. I had been planning it for months, gathering all the necessary equipment and reading up on the best spots in the area. My friends and I were thrilled to embark on this adventure, and we could not wait to explore the beautiful and rugged landscapes of the Rockies. We set out early in the morning driving towards the trailhead that would take us to our first destination, the Garden of Gods. It was a majestic and awe-inspiring place with towering red rock formations that seemed to defy gravity. As we started our climb, I couldn't help but feel a sense of exhilaration and adrenaline rush through my body. The views were breathtaking and the sense of accomplishment that came with each successful ascent was indescribable. But as the day wore on, something started to feel off. We had been climbing for quite some hours, and the sun was starting to set, casting long shadows across the landscape. I couldn't shake that feeling that we were being watched, that there was something lurking in the shadows, waiting for us to make a mistake. My friends, they brushed it off fairly easily, telling me I was just being paranoid, but I could not shake the feeling. It was like a cold chill had settled in my bones, and no matter how hard I tried, I could not shake it. As the darkness descended, we made camp, building a fire to keep warm and cooked our dinner. But as we settled in for the night, things took a turn for the worse. We started hearing strange noises, like something moving in the shadows. At first, we brushed it off as just some sort of animal, but the noises, they continued to get closer and more persistent, and we could tell that this had to be something human by the way they were moving. It was not until we heard the sound of rocks being thrown that we realized we were in some serious trouble. We huddled together, trying to stay warm, but the fear was palpable. We were in the middle of nowhere, with no cell reception and no way to call for help. We were completely at the mercy of whatever was out there in the darkness. And then, just as quickly as it started, the noise stopped, but... That was just before we began to hear what sounded like multiple more footsteps join them. We spent the rest of the night huddled together, barely sleeping, waiting for morning to come. The moment the sun rose, all the noises stopped in unison, and it sounded like they were all running away in the opposite direction. We packed up our gear immediately and started the long trek back to civilization. We never did figure out what the heck was stalking us that night, if it was a person, a group of people, I don't know. The memory of that experience, though, will stay with me for years to come. To this day, I can't help but feel a sense of unease whenever I think about this trip, and I always make sure to keep an extra eye out for any signs of danger when I'm out in the wilderness. But that's why I'm submitting this story to Swamp Dweller. I would love to know in the comments if you guys have any idea what the heck happened. The Creeper Who Didn't Get the Hint by Anonymous So I had gone to the indoor rock climbing place that I have gone to many times in my life with my friends. It was a great way to exercise and challenge ourselves while having a fun time. But on this particular night, our fun was about to be disrupted in the most unsettling way. As we arrived at the climbing gym, I noticed a man who seemed to be staring at me intently. He was tall with unkempt hair and a scraggly beard. He wore a tattered hoodie and jeans that looked like they hadn't been washed in quite some time, multiple weeks at the very least. I tried to shake off the feeling of discomfort, thinking maybe I had just been paranoid because I had drank a lot of soda that day and I was pretty hyped up on caffeine. But as we started climbing, the man continued to watch me. He stood in the corner of the gym, barely moving around at all, his eyes glued to me. I could feel his gaze on me as I climbed, 
and it made me feel absolutely uneasy. My friends didn't seem to notice anything was wrong, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off with this guy. As we took a break, the man approached us. He introduced himself as Mike and asked if we needed any help with our climbing. I declined, but he persisted, offering tips and advice. His voice was low and raspy, and every time he spoke, I could feel his breath on my neck. I tried to be polite, but his presence made me feel more than uncomfortable. We continued climbing, but I couldn't focus on anything but the man. He started making creepy comments like, You have strong arms, and I like the way you move. My friend still didn't seem to notice anything, and I didn't want to ruin our night, so I did try to ignore him. But the man didn't stop there. As I was climbing, he started circling the base of the wall, muttering under his breath. I couldn't hear what he was saying, but his voice was deep and guttural. Suddenly, he lunged at me, grabbing my leg and pulling me down. I screamed and my friends rushed to my side, asking me what happened. The man just stood there with a sickening grin on his face. I could feel his eyes on me and I knew I had to get out of there. We quickly packed up our gear and left the gym, but as we were leaving, the man grabbed my arm and whispered in my ear, I'll see you soon. I didn't sleep that night and I couldn't shake the feeling that the man was still watching me. I was afraid to leave my house, terrified that he would be waiting for me. It wasn't until a few days later that I saw news reports about a man matching his description being arrested for assaulting a young woman at the same gym we had been at. The thought of what could have happened to me if my friends had not been there still haunts me to this day, and I don't think I can ever really go rock climbing again because of that sense of unease I get. The PTSD is just too real. The Invisible Creature on the Roof by Swamp Dweller Now this story isn't a rock climbing story, but it is a personal story of mine that I wanted to share with you all. I shared this in a video many years ago, but I'd like to share it for anybody who's new. I grew up in rural areas my entire life. Whether it was beef farms in Tennessee or living in the middle of nowhere Florida, I've done it all really. Growing up without access to most commonalities we have all grown accustomed to, that's right, we had no internet, no TV, and you guessed it, no cell phones. I know, the horror. We are the last actual generation before the internet age, I like to think. Dial-up was around, but it was something most of us didn't have access to at the time. But honestly, it wasn't all that bad outside of the long, dull summer days when we would be cooking alive in the fields picking green beans. Living in an old Civil War cabin in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee, shelled out some exciting experiences. This story will be one of the many I may share if you all enjoy it. This story starts like any other. It was a typical Friday night and my brothers and I were home alone. As we didn't have much to entertain ourselves with, we began playing search in and around the house, which is basically like hide and seek. We mostly opted to stay indoors as it was pitch black outside. For more context, our cabin was on a steep hill with a long winding driveway. Our place had a basement level, the main level where most of the house was, and the upstairs that only had my room. We also had a back deck that was about 10 to 12 feet in the air. Anyway, back to the story at hand. It was pitch black outside. And going much further than the front porch at that time was something many of us didn't want to do. The game was fun but needed more variety, and with the little room we had inside, it did get kind of stale. At this point, I thought of wandering outside and hiding on the roof to make the game a bit more interesting. This would soon be one of my biggest regrets in life. At first, everything did seem fine. It was rather cold as it was nearing fall and the weather was starting to change. There was a slight breeze and the air was crisp and calming. After a few minutes of sitting on the roof, something felt off. I had been practically mesmerized by the sound of crickets and cicadas. I realized, though, that all the noise had suddenly stopped. This to me seemed very odd, but at the same time, being a naive teenager, I didn't realize that this only meant something terrible was going to happen. I sit there as still as possible for a moment trying to listen as closely as I can. I can't hear anything besides the slight breeze through the leaves. Then, an eruption of noise came from the other end of the roof as quickly as the silence came. For a bit more detail, we had a metal roof, 
making it very easy to hear when things walk on top of it. It sounded like something had landed on the opposite end of the roof. I looked over but could see nothing. This left me somewhat unnerved and my first thought was to exit the situation. However, before panicking fully, I remembered it could be my brothers messing with me since they did probably give up looking for me by now inside. I opened up my window and called my brothers. They both ran up the stairs shouting and complaining that the roof was off limits. As my oldest brother got to me, I asked him if he had been messing with me and making noise on the roof. He, of course, denied this and wanted to come up and investigate. So he and I slowly made our way to the middle of the roof and listened, just for a moment. Everything went quiet around us as it had earlier. At this point, I was already on edge, ready to karate chop a demon in the neck if I had to. Then, we hear what sounds like a pounding noise on the far end of the roof, in the opposite direction of where we are standing. After three sets of six pounding noises, it charged us. Well, I think it did anyway. It sounded like hooves were running on the metal roof, but the only issue was is we couldn't see a damn thing. The entire roof was clear, aside from us, that is. But somehow, we heard these footsteps. It quickly approached us and began running circles around us. I held out my arms, trying to see if I could feel anything, but I couldn't. The weirdest part was is that I could feel the vibrations of something running around us, but I could see nothing tangible. The footsteps circled us for many minutes, but was probably no more than a minute at most. Suddenly, it ran off to the other side of the roof and seemingly jumped and disappeared into thin air. We quickly ran inside, locked the windows and doors, and huddled up inside, freaked the hell out. To this day, I still don't really know what I experienced, but I can tell you this, there are things we cannot explain out there in this world, and this was one of the many experiences I've had that definitely reaffirms that. Mountain Biking Turned Deadly by Luke My name is Luke and I am now 20 years old. This story happened to me when I was 17. This experience still gives me chills to this day. In May 2017, I found myself going out a lot more on my mountain bike. I was getting bored of cruising around the streets, so I wanted to go out for a trail, woodland bike ride. I have never been to Lee Woods before then. Personally, I do not think I will ever go alone again. After some research into different areas, Lee Woods seemed to be the best bet. Living only a couple of miles away was a nice bike ride. On arriving, it looked very peaceful, and I was almost in a dreamlike state by my first look at the place. For a woodland area in England, let alone Bristol, it was amazing. On going into the woods, I remembered seeing different colors at the start of each trail, signifying difficulty for bikers and length for walkers. Don't take my word on that bit, I still have no clue what they mean, honestly. So I decided to go down the blue colored trail to see what was down there. Finding it exciting, I decided to go down the harder trail, and now, here's where it starts to get weird. I began having this weird sort of vision looking around as if I'm being swallowed by the woodland. Everything felt like it was getting bigger and further away. I brushed it off, but it turns out I lost track of time. I got lost in the trail. Now keep in mind I am very observant and aware of my surroundings. I then came to a strange opening. I could go left in the rough direction of the way out or right deeper into the woods. Me being me, I decided to go deeper into the woods. I came to a weird little trail that just had dodgy written all over it, metaphorically speaking. I went against my gut feeling of turning back and went down there. I came to a point of which the trail continued, but it was getting very dangerous. The trail being too bumpy for me to even walk down. I then turned back, but for a few minutes before turning back, I do not know why, but I was just standing still, staring down the trail. I felt like I was being watched from all angles even though it would be near impossible to have that many eyes surrounding me in that area. I got nervous and began walking back up the hill as I was too tired to ride at this point. Keep in mind, 
My bike tires are completely solid, with no punctures, slow punctures, or even anything wrong at all. I wish I still had the pictures of the bike. Upon getting back to the spot where I originally went to the trail, that weird loss of time thing began. It felt as if the whole path had stretched by a half a mile, as if the woodland was moving. I begin walking up the path feeling that same eerie sensation of being watched as I did beforehand. This time, it felt a bit more sinister. It felt as if something were about to happen. Bearing in mind, I had not seen a single person now since I went down that first trail. I will explain the scenery before continuing. It is a long path, a slightly steep hill to my left, a narrow river to my right, maybe four feet deep and four feet wide. Bushes are on the other side of the river, with the odd tree every now and then. Upon getting about a quarter of the way up the slowly inclining path, I hear a woman crying behind a tree up ahead. I start slowing down my walking pace to try and get a look behind the tree, but the whole time I am thinking to myself, why would someone jump across to cry behind a tree? So I edge closer to the river to look behind to see if the person is okay. Also because many people go to Lee Woods to commit suicide, so I was hoping that maybe I could help this person. But you guessed it, there is no one there and the crying stopped. A bit weirded out, I just slowly turned away and started walking again, a bit quicker as I was unnerved. I have had a few paranormal experiences before this, but not in a place like this never in the woods. Usually it was in a house or some sort of building, so this was new to me. I had this sudden shiver as I was walking, maybe a minute or so later, only a couple of meters away where I heard the crying, it started again, but this time it was opposite of me across the river. I did not bother looking. I started just going again in a bit of a jog. As I got faster I heard the bushes rustling as if there was something following me. Upon hearing this, I sped up and the crying became more and more hysterical. Bear in mind, my bike was fine before this moment in time. I have thought to myself, F this, I am gone. I try to hop on my bike with the adrenaline that was rushing through me, and I had come to an almost sudden stop. My back tire on my bike had become completely flat out of nowhere, so I had no other choice but to sprint with my bike and pray for the best, and that I do not trip or end up having to throw it and run faster. With the crying person still close to me and keeping up, I am running faster and faster praying I just get off this path that I was on. I had that feeling of wanting to cry because I could not actually do anything to help the situation or get out of it any faster. And after what felt like an hour but was probably only 5 or 10 minutes, I could see the car park. The crying had stopped following me and getting closer and started moving back down to where I first heard it. I sprinted out into the car park. I must have been as white as a sheet of paper and hysterical with my breathing and wheezing as multiple people in the car park turned to look at me like I was crazy. I saw the exit sign out of the car park and ran towards it and, whilst doing so, I noticed my bike to be moving a lot smoother. I could not believe that my bike tire had suddenly regained all of its air. It was solid again, as it was before the unnerving crying person shenanigans. I jumped on my bike and got away from Lee Woods as fast as I could, and have never gone back as every person I tell this story becomes more reluctant to go there with me. The thing that makes this story so scary to me is I have Irish heritage and Irish folklore there is a demon that we call the Banshee. She is seen in the woodlands next to rivers and lakes washing blood off clothes. It is said that if you see her washing blood off clothes, the person who owns those clothes will die. Alternatively, if you hear her crying, it means death. I cannot remember the meanings exactly of the deaths, but it means either you or a loved one will die. Since 2017, I have lost my auntie, two of my best friends, and a dog. Lee Woods is no joke. There are many stories that have come out of Lee Woods, too. You can read online about them. Search up Lee Woods, L-E-I-G-H. It is rated 
87th most haunted place in the UK according to Higgy Pop. It is a popular spot in Bristol for suicides, or it was at least. Even the ghost of Isambard Kingdom Brunel has been spotted there. Looking over the suspension bridge, which he designed, I may submit some more stories soon, as I have a couple of more experiences I have had over the years. Thanks for listening to these creepy and allegedly true rock climbing horror stories and extras at the end. If you enjoyed these stories, please be sure to punch that like button in the face so it feels it, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications to never miss a new episode as I upload them nearly every single day in all things natural and supernatural. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. If you're on Reddit, you can also submit it there at r slash thedarkswamp. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that help keep this show going on a daily basis. If you're on the go but don't have YouTube Premium but still want to download and listen to your favorite Swamp Dweller scary stories no matter where you are, you can download them absolutely free from Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and pretty much everywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. If you made it all the way to the end, definitely let me know what story was your favorite tonight in the comments down below. Be sure to comment the code word orange rock to confuse anybody who didn't make it to the end. Anybody who makes the best comment will get pinned. Thank you guys as always for supporting the swamp. I couldn't do this on a daily basis without you guys. I'll see you soon with another creepy video. Don't forget to join me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and all that good stuff. And I'll see you soon with another creepy episode.